Zooey mama, how's it going everyone? It is that time again for me to update my series four and series five token by guide tier list. Now this can apply to spotlight caches as well, but more specifically, I do have it geared towards tokens because you don't know when cards are gonna pop up in spotlights. So I first got every card organized by the tier I believe it belongs in, then organized within those tiers by series four cards being first and then series five cards. Series four cards being half the price in tokens means they are just better bang for your buck, so that helps them rank a bit higher. And then lastly, it's just alphabetical after that. So I'm first going to add in all of the April cards, all the new cards that came out in the April season, because this here is my list from about a month ago. Okay, so we've had a couple patches since then, a couple OTAs, and we've got some changes to make. So I'm gonna add in the new cards, and then I'm gonna adjust some of the existing cards based on just some card changes, mainly some buffs, some nerfs, and how those affect some other cards. So we will go ahead and get started right away with the new cards that we had come out in April. So first up, we had Baron Zemo, who is this season pass card, and he's now available as a series five card. So Baron Zemo, He's not amazing, but he does carry an archetype. Like if you want to play the mill archetype, you need to have Baron Zemo essentially, okay? So I'm first putting Baron Zemo in this B tier, which is four specific decks. I think alphabetically, he should go right at the start of the series five cards, uh, right for a better Ray Bill. So again, he's fine, he's good, he's not amazing, he's not horrible. Uh, but he does kind of carry an archetype, and that's pretty fun and valuable for your collection. Then we've got Red Hulk. Uh, Red Hulk originally came out as a 611. He was pretty quickly nerfed to a 69, but he's still very powerful, and he's so, so flexible. To me, Red Hulk is easily in the A tier. Uh, move him here. There's even arguments for him in S tier, even though, you know, he has a full 6,000 tokens. He could get nerfed again, and he doesn't create a, a whole new archetype. He is like the most flexible six cost card in the game right now, maybe, okay? Him and Dr. Doom. So there are arguments for Red Hulk as S tier, but we'll have to see um, how he keeps performing, I think, before I put him there. All right, next up, we had US Agent come out, and he was promptly buffed after release. And, you know, he's okay still. He's actually pretty powerful for a two-cost card, like the amount of power value that he can generate, but it is just four specific decks. So I am putting him in the B tier. There's arguments for C tier, uh, but we do have the toxic ongoing list that has been running around. It's been very successful, okay? You have Spectrum in there. You might have like Jean Grey, even running Punisher. I mean, just a bunch of ongoing cards. And if you have one, uh, the toxic version where you got Luke Cage in there, US Agent uh, gets some really big value. Okay, so he's actually kind of a powerhouse in that deck. So I'll put him in B tier for now. There are arguments for C tier. You know, it is a lot of tokens to commit for just one deck. Uh, Red Guardian, he's a nice test tech card. Uh, I really like Red Guardian. He was my favorite card of the April season. I think he's gonna just consistently see a decent amount of play. So I'm keeping him in B tier for now, possibly A tier territory. We're gonna have to see his play, okay? Depending on the meta, it's gonna kind of change. Some metas he'll get more value, some metas he will get less. And you know, there are a couple options. Maybe you wanna run a rogue instead. Maybe you just wanna go more expensive with like Enchantress or something. I mean, he's not really needed, but he's a nice option. He's pretty good in conquest mode. But I think for B tier, is actually a good hope for him as a strong tech card. All right, then we've got White Widow, um, also uh, a good card, maybe probably my second favorite card of the April season. I'm putting White Widow in B tier as well. <clears throat> Again, she's another card, she's tied to an archetype, uh, kind of like US Agent. She's tied to clog decks or junk decks, whatever you like to call it, but she's really strong in those decks. Um, they maybe now kind of need her, you know, so maybe she's getting close to, to A tier territory, but she's definitely not as uh, impactful or needed as Annihilus. 
and you know she she's good but she's not carrying the archetype so i think b tier is a good home for her uh for now at least and then we've got valentina valentina is a fun card but i'm gonna be putting her in the c tier and uh the reason is well she was kind of what was expected i mean if you did watch my valentina uh, prediction video i said listen she's probably decent and she's gonna be really fun, but there are just so many options, okay? And that's kind of what happened. I mean, people were playing her in Loki. She saw a decent amount of play the first week, kind of died off. But you can play Valentina as the two cost card that generates, you know, this discounted and uh, three minus three power six cost card to your hand. Or you can play Cable, which is also a two three to get a copy of a card from your opponent's deck or steal it. Or you can play Mirage, who's a two two that gives a copy of a card in your opponent's hand gives it plus power, or you play Sentinels or Toothy. I mean, there's just so many options. Okay, Valentina's really not needed. She has a, a good bonus for her fun factor, but she's just so replaceable, okay? Even if she was a little bit better, even if uh, the six cost card pool had better options, even if she didn't get minus three, kept it at original power, just minus one or minus two, there are just so many options. It's such a tough spot to compete for, and the fact that everybody has Sentinel uh, everybody has cable and Valentina's over here at 6,000 tokens. I mean, that's really hard to to justify spending 6,000 tokens on a card that's pretty similar to cards you already have in your collection. So I think those are my current homes um, for all of the new cards. So I moved Baron Zemo to B tier, Red Hulk, the only one I'm putting in A tier, US Agent, Red Guardian, White Widow going to B tier, and Valentina getting the low score of the month in C tier. US Agent, again, has arguments for C tier, uh, but he did get buffed about halfway through the season, so that helped him uh, move it up to B tier for me. But I do have some changes I need to make from some existing cards in this tier list. Okay, we did have some pretty hefty buffs and nerfs coming down. So I guess I will start from the top. First up, Zabu, my, my boy Zabuti. Uh, took a big nerf when I last did this list. He was a 2-2 ongoing still now. He's a 2-3 on reveal and He's now just worse. Okay. He's still decent. He's actually not a bad card, but he's definitely worse and Unfortunately, he's kind of similar to Psylocke now, right? And I think Psylocke is a series 3 card so spending uh, only 3,000 tokens. He is series 4 not series five, but it's still, you know, kind of sucks that he's more similar to a card and he's just not as good. So I'm actually moving Zabu down by two tiers. Okay, normally I just move cards up or down by one, but Zabu took a pretty big hit going down by two. Should put him after Spider Ham alphabetically. Now, with Zabu getting nerfed, that basically hurts every single four cost card in the game. That does not mean they're not good anymore but it hurts them. So four cost cards that were maybe kind of on the border have dropped down for me. So Iron Lad, I've had an S tier for a while since I first made this list a few months back. Kept him in S tier because he's so flexible. He's great, especially if you don't have a full collection. If you're someone who goes to get decks online or from YouTube or Twitter or whatever, and you're missing some cards, a lot of times you can just like fill a spot with Iron Lad, right? Because he's copying one of the cards you do have. But with Zabu being pretty much out of the meta, Iron Lad being a 4-6 more often than a 3-6 now, and just some other good options in the game, I am dropping him down to the A tier. So he's still a solid buy, okay, still a great card, but no longer a must-have in my opinion, okay? Although he's still like one of, if not the most flexible four-cost card. So maybe he moves it back up one day, but He's just not seeing a ton of play right now, and I do think the Zabu change hurt him. I'm actually gonna be moving Mobius up. So we lost Zabu in S tier, but I think Mobius is actually good for this spot now because first of all, he's series four. He's only 3,000 tokens. The value you can get from this tech card for only 3,000 tokens is insane. I mean, most months, Second Dinner is releasing a card that does some kind of energy cheat. Okay, recently we've seen Valentina that uh, reduces the cost of a six cost card. 
We've seen Mockingbird, who could become like a 0-9, but Bobies keeps it a 5-9. We've seen Pixie, who swaps costs of cards and decks. At the end of this May season, we're going to have Sasquatch. Mobies can get so much value, and especially if you like to make your own decks, throw in some tech options, or play Conquest mode, Mobius can just win. Okay, so the value he produces for 3,000 tokens is insane. I think along the lines of Legion, where it's also, you know, just fun and really unique and irreplaceable. You cannot replace Mobius in your deck, right? No card does what he does. So I'm actually keeping him in S tier now. Um, we did have Eliath get nerfed. Eliath was the old 6-2 that just killed cards. Now he just removes the abilities, but he's a 6-8. Honestly, Eliath is still good. He's still really strong and people do not play around him anymore, but he's not doing much versus just like raw power cards like Red Hulk. Um, I'm actually going to be moving him down into the B tier. Okay, so again, I still think Eliath is really good. I still think he's probably worth it, but we are getting more options. Red Hulk is another option you can just play um, on turn six, right? Instead of Eliath, you just go for big power. And that's also why I'm moving Blob down. So I'm moving both Eliath and Blob down basically because of the Eliath nerf and because of Red Hulk. Red Hulk is more flexible than Blob. They get to about the same power. Red Hulk sometimes gets a bit bigger, but he's more flexible. And you've got two six house cards doing the same thing. You're often not trying to play both of them in the same deck. You're going to have to pick and choose. And I think Red Hulk wins that battle right now. So Blob. Moving down to B tier, although he's still a strong card. All right, next up, I'm probably going to be taking Dokken down. Dokken, I've had him B tier for a while because he is kind of for the specific decks for discard or, you know, kind of cheesy uh, double up through discard or destroy. But he just didn't see any play. You know, old season pass card, he is series four. But he just does not see play. Discard decks have better things to do. There's multiple versions, sub-archetypes of discard that don't run Dokken, and they're just better than the Dokken decks. So I'm dropping him down to C tier. Sorry, Dokken. I, I think he needs a bit of a buff. That would be cool. Again, he has only 3,000 tokens, though. So I don't think he's F tier. If you, if you like that style, you think he's fun, you know, you're only spending 3,000 tokens to find out and test him. All right, I am going to be moving Scar down, another former season pass card for the January season. But again, you're a six cost card that could have its uh, cost reduced with 11 power. There's just so many stat sticks in the game. Okay, Red Hulk having an A tier. At some point, they're probably going to release another six cost card that just gets really big power. And that will replace Red Hulk. I mean, stat sticks are the most replaceable cards in the game. So they may be really good right away. They often have to be really good to see play because if they're not good and they're boring, they're not gonna see any play, okay? But if they're boring, but they're really strong, they'll see play. And so they're often pretty good right away or just decent, kind of like Scar. And over time, they'll maybe get nerfed if they're too good or a new, bigger, better card just comes out and they get easily replaced. Um, so Scar moving down, he really didn't see any play, and there's just so many big options. You do not need to be running that big green dude. All right, next I'm actually taking down War Machine. War Machine was a card I had placed there uh, just in B tier last time I did the list because he was new, and that was his first home, and I debated B to C, and he's just not seeing play. He's just not needed, and the problem is he doesn't cheat. Okay, yeah, he can let you play your Infinite on turn six, Ebony Ma on turn six, cards in closed locations, but he's not cheating energy. And you can just play a Red Hulk that gets like 19, or maybe now it's like 17 or 21 power on turn six without War Machine, right? He's just not cheating energy. The cards he lets you play everywhere, you still need to pay six for the Infinite. He's not giving you more energy or anything. And so he's just not really doing too much. Um, if you're going for some kind of cheesy lockdown deck, you know, then maybe go for him. So if he does suit you and he's kind of fun, then go for him. But definitely not keeping up with the competition, especially for Series 5 cards. That is 6,000 tokens. And I will also be moving down Werewolf by Night. 
Um, also, I got to move War Machine. I realize alphabetically should be after Valentina. Werewolf by Night used to be the best card of the game. It's that simple. He used to be the best card of the game. And then he got changed to being a four-cost card, and that really hurt him. It hurt him a lot, but he was still kind of okay. With the Zabu being nerfed, that hurts War Machine, and that hurts Werewolf by Night. Okay, that's why I'm dropping both of these down, is because they lost the Zabu synergy. Yeah, you can still play Zabu, but you're probably not. And you cannot consistently get them out for three energy, even if you are playing Zabu, right? Because the way the turns and draws work out, you just don't know. So... Now you are just playing a 4-6 War Machine and a 4-4 Werewolf, and that's really hard to justify with the amount of just big stat power cards we have going on. Werewolf even bouncing around isn't getting that crazy power anymore. I mean, it's not even that impressive um, or much better than other big 4-cost cards that we have in the game. So those again drop down. In terms of um, some C-tier cards that I'm going to be moving around, Lady Deathstrike has had a funny story. Since I made this video last month, she got buffed to a 5-7, and then she got nerfed to a 5-6, and they did change her ability where she only kills cards with 3 power or less. She's good. Um, she's seen a lot of play in junk decks alongside Annihilus because you kill Sentry's Void. If you don't get Annihilus, you can play Lady Deathstrike instead. So she's good. Even after her you know, buff and then small nerf, uh, she's still... A pretty strong card, and she's only series four, only 3,000 tokens. She belongs in the B tier now, okay? She's kind of like a, a techie card that's got decent power, so I think she's solid, and she's a bit more worth chasing after. I'm also moving up Cannonball. Cannonball is someone who has not been buffed, but he has benefited from other buffs. Zabu getting nerfed means Shang-Chi is not as good because he's not as cheap. You can't get him out for uh, three costs. So Shang-Chi was just a much better option than Cannonball. Now Shang-Chi is just one less energy and Cannonball seeing real play also because of the Eliath nerf, okay? So Sh uh, Zabu getting nerfed, which kind of impacts Shang-Chi and Eliath getting nerfed, both helped out Cannonball. So he got indirectly buffed twice. So I'm putting him in the B tier for now. I'm also moving up Sebastian Shaw. I've had him in the C tier. But honestly, he does belong in B tier now, considering Toxic Surfer decks are just good. <laughs> They're just legit good decks. They've seen a lot of play, and Shaw is a staple in them. Now, I will be moving Super Giant down to the F tier. Uh, this was another card that had a bit of hype from the community before she came out, and she just flopped. She is completely flopped. And that was even when Zabu was an ongoing. This is another four cost card that, you know, just never really <laughs> saw the light of day. Just wasn't very good. And with now not even being able to Zabu if you wanted to, that just makes her even worse. So I do think she needs a buff or at least just drop her down in series. I don't know. Do something. So I'm moving her to the F tier. But Jean Grey has gone a buff. Okay, Jean Grey has been in my F tier category, is waiting for drops or buffs. She finally got a buffed. She is a four power card now, so she's got plus one power buff, but she did get synergy with US Agent, because uh, that helps her, and they're also ongoing cards, so they see play in this ongoing Spectrum deck, or Toxic ongoing. And I'm actually moving her up by two. Okay, I think Jean Grey has made huge improvements um, in the past couple months. Getting this small buff and getting some other cards to synergize with, she's decent now. Okay, it is specific. You are just playing these ongoing or you know toxic ongoing decks, but she can work well in them. And she is surprising, and she can be uh, really hard for some other decks to deal with, especially in conquest mode. So those are all my changes um, for this most updated tier list for May. Obviously, we have some new cards coming out this month. We'll have to see how they perform. We've got Blink, Nocturne, Sage Namor, and Sasquatch. I think most of them will fall in the B and C tier category. I could see Blink and or Sasquatch falling in A tier. Okay, I do think those are the two pretty clear standout cards of the month because they both cheat. Okay, they're both energy cheaters. Blink is swapping out cards for something bigger. And Sasquatch can become like a 0-10 or 2-10 or 
something that's cheating, okay? All the more reason why Mobius is an S tier now. He's got so many great targets out there because so many cards just cheat. They just do not play by the rules. Um, so I will be putting up an image on the screen here that has separators for Series 4 and Series 5 cards. I'll put little brackets around it. And I keep a copy of this tier list picture in my Discord. So if you ever want to just reference it real quick or just save it, screenshot it, whatever, you can go ahead, find it in the Discord, and do that. So let me know your thoughts on this most updated tier list your thoughts on where I've placed all these new April cards and where you think some of the May season cards might fall when I look to place them next month. So until then, stay positive. I'll see you next time.